When I was a child, nature took me in as her own. I listened to the wind in the trees and learned to communicate with everything around me. Nature spoke to me and I became its voice. You made a movie. I made a movie. Opal. Opal. All yeah. right, so let's start out with your, your, what is it, your tagline, your pitch line. What is Opal? Opal is a true story about a self-taught naturalist who publishes a childhood diary in the Atlantic Monthly and she gets really famous until people discover these encoded messages in the diary and they wonder if it's a fake. From the beginning, we knew that Opal had an interesting story to tell. Before there was a story, there was a young woman with a gift. Opal was uh, a period film, a historic film. When was Opal? Uh, so the film takes place in 1919. Mm -hmm. And um, it covers basically a year of her life where there's a little bit of an intro in the beginning when she's a little girl and a little bit of a coda at the end when she's uh, an older person. She lived a long time. She lived a long time. She died recently in the mid-90s. Mid yes. Um, so she was born in 1898. Right. Um, now for your first feature film and a minuscule budget, what kind of problems did you have to overcome and how'd you do it to make it really look like 1920. We had to find really great locations. That was that was the first thing. We had to find locations that would work. Which were supposed to be the Oregon woods, lots of sequoias you can find. She moves to Boston, uh, lots of historic buildings, and yet you were able to do it all in the Bay Area. Right, right. I shouldn't have given it away because it certainly looks like wherever she says she is. Yeah, well, we have some great locations here, yeah. and, I, and I felt like that was part of the impulse for making the film, is I just wanted to showcase how beautiful the Bay Area is and really use aspects of the Bay Area that you rarely see on film, right. and particularly the whole nature and the redwoods and the ability to be out there, little, you know, um, cottages in the redwoods kind of thing. I think that was and pretty And big great. gorgeous mansions. And big gorgeous mansions, yeah. There are a few of those in yeah. there. You know, that's nice. Yeah, no, we, we spent a lot of time looking at locations. So it's kind of like a little visual tour of, the, of, of some of the greatest places in the Bay Area that maybe people have never even heard of. Yeah, great. And you used archival footage. And we use some archival footage um, to kind of fill in. So, the, so the so the film has it's really visually textured and kind of rich. So there's a lot of live action. There's a little bit of effects in there. There's some archival footage, and it's kind of a tapestry type aesthetic. Okay, now the woman who played Opal, Naya Lee Adorador Knudsen. Say that again. Naya Lee Adorador Knudsen. Where did you find her? She was cast through Nancy Hayes Casting. Ah, uh, so she's a local lady. She, she was local. She ah. um, was a theater major at UC Berkeley. She'd been a SAG actress since she was a little kid. And um, she is now in graduate school in Washington. Oh, so she went up to the woods. She did. She did. Because she carries the whole film. Yes, she does. She's it in is almost brilliant every film. scene. When they say Opal, it really is just about Opal interacting. Right. Now, I, I, I don't know if I should bring this up or not, but there has been a big question about Opal's um, veracity or even sanity. Right. Um, how does this work into your research and what you finally put on the screen about her? Where did you stand with Opal and the controversy? Well. That's the ongoing question. Uh -huh. That's the ongoing question. I, um, I felt like I couldn't really get a clear answer by the initial research. And it's one of the reasons it took me a long time to do the film is I, I spent a long time trying to figure out whose perspective is actually the right perspective. I think the question of who she is is sometimes obscured with, the, with all the facts of her life. And I think what really compelled me is that she was really bright and really talented. And um, whether or not she was truthful in the writing of the diary or how the diary got written, um, it's an interesting piece of writing. 
no yeah. matter how you look at it, it's a really interesting piece of writing and um, kind of fascinating. And so I just I thought it was worth kind of recuperating this this person's story who um, who only sort of a small following had known about. Right. She started out as what they called back then a naturalist. Right. Because you couldn't go to school to learn what people like Audubon was doing and Thoreau was writing about. Mm -hmm. And that was just going out into nature, observing, and drawing pretty pictures. Mm -hmm. And she did make a book of that. That was her original intention. Right. Was that book ever published? The book was published. There's, I think there's only a couple hundred copies. It's extremely rare. It's very uh -huh. hard to find. There's actually a copy in um, the University Hi. There's a copy in, Nature. in the University of Oregon at Eugene, which I saw. If you put uh -huh. on a pair of white gloves, you can open up a box and, and look through it, and it's, right. it's, it's interesting. Um, so yeah, she, she did that, and she's, she's sort of in the, in the footsteps of like a John Muir, right. who sees nature as kind of this spiritual force, and, um, and yeah, that's, that's, that, that was her original intention, was to write an educational book about nature for children. That was what she really had originally wanted to do. Right. And then when she met this publisher at the Atlantic Monthly, he suggested, let's um, publish a diary, any sort of diary that you may have had as a child. And so that was kind of the switch that happened. And, and the diary is the thing that most people know her for now. Right. And that's been republished many, many times. You going to stay in filmmaking? Absolutely. What are you going to do next? You see, I can't just assume you will. I have to ask that first, though. No one has ever said, no, I've done it and I'm moving on now. Nobody ever leaves filmmaking unless they're forced out because nobody wants them to make another movie. What's your next project? Um, my next script is a script set in Florida, and uh, it's kind of a kind of a quirky coming of age tale. Not to be shot in the Bay Area. No, everything no. else will be done in the Bay Area, but the actual shooting has to be done in Florida. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll all go watch Opal because it shows a lot of women's situations at that time too, which is also very interesting. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. Uh, I think it is worth looking at. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Opal, sometimes you only get one chance. Take it when it comes.